hope that someone coming into the studio for the first time to look in choosing to take something home for their own would be finding some of the joy that we find in making the glass. Neither of us have had any art background before we got involved with building the glass blowing studio. I'm Dick Moyel. I was in the medical field as a neurosurgeon. And I'm Kathy Peppel. For the last 25 years, I've been married to Dick Moyel. And for the last 20 years, we've had a glass blowing studio together. Before we took on this venture, I was a physician assistant, and before that, an operating room nurse. So Dick and I were accustomed to spending a lot of time together and working together. The roles may have changed a little bit once we got into the glass blowing studio, but there was still a dynamic that seemed to transfer pretty well to this setting. Could you get the door for me? And then I'm going to go past you to cool the pipe before I go to the bench. Okay. okay. The process of glass blowing is really seductive and addictive, apparently. So we just wanted to try it and didn't have the time to do that before retirement. So after retirement, we started taking classes. Don't you think we tended to be the oldest students I in think the class? We're, the, we're <laughs> the oldest, as they refer to us as ma'am and sir. Uh, but we've learned a lot. There was an art class community in Houston. We made attempts to check the various uh, colleges and universities, and there wasn't a program, so we decided uh, to build our own studio. Beginning glass blowers all have the same style. It's the glass being itself. Over time, with an understanding of how the material works and how it handles, then you can start to ask it to do some things we're interested in having it do, but it's really a relationship that continues to go on with the material. There are some basic steps for all blown objects. Getting enough glass on the end of the blow pipe to accomplish the piece usually takes up the most amount of time because that's where the coloring and the patterning occurs. Okay. We start out with a shape idea, but if the feedback we're getting from the piece runs counter to that, then we make adjustments during the process. So once all of the pattern and the glass is on the end of the blow pipe, the glass is blown out, the walls are thinned, the shape is refined, and then the glass is transferred from the blow pipe to another steel rod so that the raw end that's broken off the blow pipe can be shaped and formed. And when that's done, the glass is put into an annealing oven where it is cooled at a very prescribed rate depending on the thickness of the glass to relieve the stress in the glass to bring it down to room temperature. The challenge has been to know what our limitations. We have smaller sized equipment, so we're not going to be able to do gigantic pieces. How does it feel? Feels good. I'll go right to the glory hole then as soon as you break it off. I think the biggest I'll difference the is that there's, there's room for play and experimentation here, whereas in the operating room, there was none of that, and, and there door. was a stress that's hard to kind of define, but we, that's something that we, are, we don't feel at all here. Blow again. When we're in the operating room, the patient's asleep. Stop. Stop. Nice. And everything that's movement is movement with the, the hands. But here, the, the glass is moving, and we're getting up and reheating and you know, cooling, and so it's, it's that aspect. We're not stable in one position for hours. Glass blowing is a team effort. Okay, got it. Torch? Because it's safer to do with someone helping, but it's also a community project and process then. That and that's part of the joy of working with glass and blowing glass. And to be able to uh, partner with my partner is really something that's pretty special. I don't, we wouldn't give that up for anything. <gasps> yeah. Teamwork. <laughs>